Many of the abstract artists we profile don't have a precise plan before they start working. They let their piece lead them. But tonight, we have a story on a very modern sculptor who knows exactly what his pieces will look like. Vince Patton shows us how Julian Voss Andre is grabbing national attention as he magnifies things as small as a molecule. I'm Julian Voss Andre, and I'm a sculptor. There are some examples of people who are like only in the art world and they totally refuse to look at anything scientific and I think that's really a big pity because they just fail to see the sublime just because it happens to be found scientifically. But thank God there are many people with an open mind. Where some people see a bright line between science and art, Julian Voss Andre peers right through it. He studied quantum physics in Germany, then came to Portland and studied art, and has since merged his passion for both. I'm working on a piece which is based on the molecular structure of the antibody, and it's going to be about 12 feet in diameter, a ring with an antibody molecule in it. It's an idea I had a long time ago in 2001 when I went to Pacific Northwest College of Art. It will be called Angel of the West. Um, antibody molecules are like an army of angels. This is the largest sculpture Julian has ever attempted, and his most intricate. Compare, for instance, the sculpture on display in front of the boyhood home of Nobel Prize winning chemist Linus Pauling in Portland. Julian made this tribute, creating his own version of Pauling's famous alpha helix protein. His latest sculpture is far more complex. It includes 1,336 individual pieces of stainless steel. So here are all the pieces which have been assembled to strands. In science, these are called beta strands. So they are these longish pieces of amino acids. And they're about 90 or so for the whole piece. Every joint has a number. It amounts to a massive custom-made puzzle, a sculpture which began life as a design on a computer. I love working with a computer directly because if I'm in control of all the steps, then that gives me a chance to, to have my creativity play with it. You know, if I outsource it, then it doesn't, nothing happens in my head and, and I don't use it for my growth. His art merges with mathematics. He not only designs on a computer, he then writes a computer program to instruct the laser cutting machine how to cut his steel. I have to because, you know, nobody would write those for me. <laughs> so what can I do? I have an idea like, I want to render a pro amino acid chain as a mitre cut sculpture. So what can I do? Try it by hand, I tried it, it doesn't work, it's super complicated. So I basically wrote a program which translates scientific data into cutting instructions. And that's what I'm doing. This took me half a year or so. The computer also allows him to play to with his that. antibody design. Just for fun, I superimposed the image of the antibody onto this human being in the circle and it turned out that it had exactly the same aspect ratio. And so he paired an antibody molecule, known for only 20 years or so, with one of the most famous drawings of the last 500 years, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. It fits really neatly for me because both is about the merging of art and science. You know, the Renaissance was all about that. that was where some artists look to the human form, Julian looks deep inside it. I love an arm with the muscles and how it works. But it gets even more beautiful if you go from this organic macroscopic realm down to the constructivist mathematical realm of little molecules. His first welded piece captures the essence of a protein from an African herbal tea used to induce labor in pregnant women. I was just intrigued with the structure because it's an unusual protein, it's cyclic, it's, it has no beginning and end. He has also played with another famous shape, the buckyball, 
Julian happened to have studied this microscopic structure in his physics studies. Not satisfied with just one artistic version, he also blew one up to enormous proportions. It hangs as if passing through a grove of trees. And I realized it would collapse, so I just thought, what can I do? So I put it around trees. And then I realized how beautiful that is. And that kind of brings me to the initial idea. It's about things intersecting with each other. However, he does not confine himself to the microscopic. His quantum man stands at the Mary Hill Museum in the Columbia Gorge. A sculpture which almost disappears when you look at it from a different angle. He's playing with something new, too. Bubbles. And I was thinking, what is a natural way of connecting dots in space? And this time he's starting without computers. And that kind of thought gave me the idea to use for bubbles, balloons, and fill the gaps in between the balloons when you fill them in some mold with a hardening liquid like resin or wax. In the meantime, he needs to finish Angel of the West. He concedes he should have finished polishing the welds earlier. I couldn't take it any longer than waiting, you know, so I had to assemble it. We can always fix those little things. So he put all 1,300 pieces together. Now it is time to see how it looks standing up. He must use a crane to lift it. Actually, it might be a little dangerous, so this might slip off. I'm not sure. I haven't done it with a base plate on. It's going to stand on a pedestal this tall, so it will make it even larger. It's pretty much how I envisioned it. And it's not too busy and not too simple, obviously. It's, you can still realize the protein aspect of it. It's pretty close to the real thing and still makes sense. I think it's good, yeah. I'm very happy with it. Many of the buyers of his art happen to be scientists. This giant sculpture is a major commission for the Scripps Institute in Florida but Julian hopes soon to reach a broader audience who can appreciate the art in science. And it's really too bad that often in art, science is considered something cold and boring as opposed to a way of really seeing the beautiful in nature. Angel of the West is no longer in Portland. Julian sent us a picture to show us that the enormous sculpture is now complete and installed in front of the Scripps Institute in Florida. He's also got a new sculpture on display locally. It's called Quantum Woman. You can see it at Lake Oswego's Gallery Without Walls at the corner of First Avenue and A Street. You can learn more about all his work on his website, julianvossandre.com.